All right, what's up, everybody? We are back, and this time we're going to be talking about Volterra and using functions. So using Metron's functions to affect Volterra's tracks. So we're going to be doing things like duplicate, things like pattern length, things like nudge, um, and uh, expand and contract, and those kind of things. Pretty much anything that you can do on a Metron track, you can apply to a Volter Volterra track. So we're just going to dive right in. I've got a little patch set up, and um, you don't have to really worry about the voices that you can't see on the screen. What we're worried about right now is just Metron and Volterra. So this is my first little voice. It's just a square wave going into a VCA with an envelope on it, and that's going into the performance mixer. And then this is my second little voice. So I've got these set up as uh, gates, thir channel, gate channels 13 and 15. So if we change up 13, you'll hear the rhythm change. And then if we change up 15, you'll hear the rhythm change. So we'll just go back to 16th notes on those for now. And the reason why we have those set up like that is so we can just kind of do some duplicate, copy and paste kind of things and see how it goes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do some duplicate functions. All right, so we've got this thing going. I'm going to clear out whatever's going on there. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the user scale. And I can say I just want these four notes to play, two octaves, and then we need to run our Volterra channel out into our spectrum that we're listening to. And then I'm just going to record a quick sequence just by recording it. All right, so there we go. There's our sequence. I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to delete a couple steps. All right, so there we go. There's our sequence. I'm going to pull up this second one. Let's say I just want this one to match, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hold duplicate. And instead of using our track buttons, we're just going to use what we call the turn gesture. So turn gesture is just turning the knob up to the top and, and back again. And that's using the knob like a button. So you can see we've copied track Volterra 1. And we're just going to paste it to Volterra 2. And now we can see that this LED is moving. Our uh, second oscillator is not doing much because we don't have a uh, cable plugged in. So I'm just going to go out of track 2 into the Volt per octave. And now we've got the same line on both oscillators. So now I can go through and I can change up uh, the pattern on two or the voltage on two just by recording a little bit of it. And uh, let's say I hate that, so I'm just going to go and duplicate one and put it on two again. So again, that turn gesture is really important. If you want to do anything to a Volterra track that you think you need a button for, we're just going to be holding that function button and turning the knob to the top pulling it down a little bit, and that is the gesture that uses the knob like a button. So the next thing we're going to do is um, we're just going to do duplicate pattern length. So we've got this guy going. We've got a little kick drum just for time. Let's say we want to make this four bars long. So just like normal, we can hold duplicate, hit pattern length, and that made our entire pattern, including our Volterra tracks, um, four pages long. So we're looking at page four right now. I'm going to go through and just add some more uh, Volterra changes at the end of page four here. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just adding stuff. It actually sounds pretty cool, right? That's the beautiful thing of that user scale, setting up the user scale, going to global, turn the knob of the output you want to change. The top one is user, and now we can use this keyboard down here and these guys are our voltage ranges. So that's a really awesome way to do that. Uh, for more information on the user scale, check out our previous videos. All right, so this is cool, but let's say I just want to make our, uh, our second voice, the one that's uh, at a lower octave, let's say I just want to make that four steps. I want the rest to be four pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold pattern length, you can see that the longest track on my current step window is 64. And when I hit any tracks over here, these are Metron tracks, so I'm just finding out how long all those are. Those are all 64 steps. So 
the lower one of the octaves is knob number two. So I'm just gonna change that and then I'm gonna use, that took us into Volterra mode, right? Or in Volterra view. So I'm going to pattern length. You can see we're still looking at Metrons. As soon as I touch this knob, we're now looking at Volterra tracks. We can go through here and see the different pages, things like that. But right now, I just wanna make this four steps long. So now that we've taken over the matrix uh, with uh, Volterra information, I can just say, okay, track two on this Volterra, I wanna be four steps long. And there we go. I've got a four step pattern. You can see I've only got voltage changing here. So I'm just gonna use my record again and just add some stuff in there. And now I've got that four step pattern going on. It's probably too high. So I'm gonna take that down into the lower octaves here. So let's listen to only that one. So right now you can hear that I'm using unquantized voltages. So I'm gonna go through here and change up my user scale again just by going to global, turning that knob. And let's say I only want these three notes. I'm gonna clear the Voltaire information, hold clear, perform our turn gesture. And now I'm just gonna record a new line in there. So one thing that's cool about using four and eight step patterns is it gives you kind of that vintage feel. Um, a lot of older step sequencers were only eight steps long, so using an eight step sequencer kind of gives us that old school feel. And then if we put a longer sequence on top of that, we get a little bit of variation, which keeps us in the modern age, right? So again, I'm gonna go through here and change my voltage range. You can see I've got negative five to five volts selected, so instead of that, I'm just gonna do a two octave range. That's for Volterra no or track number two on my Volterra. So I'm gonna clear that out again. And then I'm gonna hold record and just record a couple things. There we go, that's a little bit better. And then adding just those notes just by sweeping stuff in with a four, with a four step sequence is kind of fun to just add a little bit of weirdness. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this over to B, and then we're just gonna move into B. And we're gonna make everything one page long. So we're just gonna hit duplicate and pattern length. And that made all of our tracks, Volterra and Metron, all exactly 16 steps long, and it copied out our Volterra information. So now I'm gonna record some some more uh, automation here on my baseline. Maybe I'll do a little bit on this guy too and just switch it up completely. So I'm gonna duplicate A and put it on C. And we'll listen to C here. And let's say we want the voltages from track one on, uh, on B to be in our C pattern. So there's a couple ways we can do that. We can go into B we can hold, duplicate, do our turn gesture, move over to C, do our turn gesture again. And now we're gonna have all that information there. So I can clear this out, put A onto C again. And there's another way we can do this that's a lot faster. So just like Metron, you can take anything higher and paste it to anything lower. So that's how the, so with the hierarchy of Metron, uh, variations being at the top, we can duplicate a variation and just only paste track information. So what I mean by that, so we're gonna bring this back. I'm gonna duplicate, let's just clear out our voltages. So now those are running and let's just say we wanna get the voltages from A and put them on C. We're editing C, we're looking at C. That's really important, we just wanna be looking at that. We're gonna hold duplicate press A, now we have dupe, we have copied everything in A. And we can just paste certain things. So let's just paste the Volterra tracks by performing the turn gesture. So again, you can do that with Metron and that's a real quick way to just steal information from another uh, variation. You can do it while, one's, while you're playing um, 
or not. You just have to be, you're going to be pasting to whatever variation you are editing. So you want to make sure you know what you're looking at um, and what you're hearing before you try and do any of these, just so you're clear and you don't get confused. All right, so moving forward, other functions include clear, nudge, and expand and contract. So we'll just do those real quick. Let's just clear out. We've done clear a few times, but I'm just going to clear out voltages here. Hold clear, perform the turn gesture on the tracks you want. And again, what I just said earlier, we're looking at E, we're editing E, not C. So that's why nothing happened. So I'm going to go to C, we're now editing that. Clear out my Voltaire information. And there we go, We've just, we're starting from scratch again. So I'm going to make a new sequence for these guys. And I'm going to do this one a little bit more uh, planned out. And we'll just make sure our pattern length is one page. So there's my lead. And then for my baseline, I'm just going to try and make a little bit. And we can see my Volterra information here. My cursors are offset. That's because I had a crazy different pattern lengths and now I just went out to one, uh, one bar. And uh, so we can just hit reset. And now everything's going to be in line again. We can see that all, that all looks good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to nudge. So let's say I wanna move this, uh, this information um, just around on the grid and see what it sounds like in a different place. Just hold nudge. Then I'm gonna hit, do my turn gesture. So that's selecting my Volteras. And now I can come here and just like on Metron, I've got these flashing lights letting me know that tracks one through four, this is where I uh, am starting. And I just use either the track select button or the first step button to move the, uh, the Voltaire information around. So now you can see I'm just pushing that around on the grid to see where I like it. All right, so now we can do uh, expand and contract. So how we perform that normally is we hold duplicate and we hit nudge to expand. And if we do that on the global scale, it's gonna take our whole beat and all of our Voltaire information. And that basically is like a clock divider, right? That is just saying play at half speed. We can say duplicate contract, and this is gonna take us back to where we were. Let's say we only want to do that on a Volterra track. So if we wanted to do it on a Metron track, you know, we'd hit duplicate and then the track and then expand. Same exact concept with Volterra, except for we just use our turn gesture. So I'm going to hold duplicate, turn the knob to the top, down to the bottom. I have now duplicated track two. And um, I can go through and just say, let's uh, expand that. So let's hit expand. And now my track one is still changing at the same time, but my track two of Volterra has been expanded out into halftime. Everything else is left alone. If I want to bring that back, hold duplicate, track two again, hit contract, and now we're back in time just how we were. All right, so now we're going to go through the effects fill section and how your effects are going to affect your um, Volterra tracks. That's a lot of me saying the word effect, and I'm glad I got through it. So we're going to go through here. We go into effects. And um, just to be reminded, the top row is mutes, channels 1 through 16. So I can mute our kick drum, bring it back in. Mutes will not affect Volterra tracks. They're only going to affect uh, the Metron tracks. The second one is our rolls. And again, those are only going to affect the Metron tracks. So it kind of sounds like they're affecting the Volterra tracks here, but that's just because it's only moving the gate around. So the voltages are still changing on the same um, same same pattern and the, the voltages are still on the same uh, grid and doing all the same stuff. What will change though is loops. So the third row down is loops and we can loop one step, 
two steps, three steps, four steps, all the way to 16. And so the loops are always, right now, are gonna loop our Volterra tracks. So just like normal tracks, we can enable or disable the Volterra track. So let's say we just, we don't want the kick drum to, to loop, but we want everything else to loop. We can just, while we're in effects, we can hit uh, either two or three, the track enable button two or three, we're just gonna use three. And we can see on the screen this says enable. So we're gonna do that and we're just gonna say, I don't want the kick drum. So now when we use this loop, everything's gonna loop except for that kick drum. Well, we can do the same thing with Volterra. When we hold our enable button, you can see over here we now have these orange yellowish LEDs. Those are telling us that those tracks are enabled. If we wanna disable the track from loop, we just do our turn gesture for that track. So I disabled both Volterra tracks from the loop. Now I go through and I loop. Let's put the kick drum back in. And you can hear everything. The kick drum is looping back behind there, but the Volterra tracks are not looping anymore. So we can say, I only want one Volterra track to loop. And now the baseline one is looping while the other one is running free. Or we can go through and we say all of them. One of the cool things about this mode is if you do want to enable all tracks at once, you can just hold the enable button and hit the select. And that will enable or disable your entire Volterra, as you can tell from the LEDs here. All right, so that's it. Using functions on Volterra is just as simple as using them on Metron. You just want to use that turn gesture instead of a button. It's as simple as that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We are going to be throwing down a ton more videos on Metron and Volterra. So yeah, just stay tuned. And uh, thank you again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.